Morning, everyone. Are you getting ready for Thanksgiving? I hope so. Maybe I'll see you later this afternoon. Any announcements, joys, or concerns? I have one announcement. Um, this Saturday, this Saturday, we're going to be doing some fluffing. So we need to get the sanctuary all ready for Christmas. So we need all kinds of fluffers. What we need is people to help decorate the trees. We need people to put the um, garland up around, put the bows on the garland, put the wreaths out, um, get everything ready to put the rest of the decorations on the tree itself. So anybody that can come in and help on Saturday morning at 9 a.m., if we get enough people, we've been out of here by 11 o'clock before. So um, most of the decorating will be done on hanging of the greens, which is the 3rd of December, but we have to get everything ready to go for us to do this on the 3rd. So if anybody would be willing to come and help out, I would really appreciate it. Uh, 9 o'clock on Saturday. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I had mentioned ooh, sorry, Harper before. Um, she is our two-year-old cousin and she has brain cancer. They did another scan while she's been on this clinical trial and her tumor has grown. So she's no longer um, able to be on the clinical trial. So if everybody could just continue to pray really hard and um, we'll get somewhere with it. <laughs> Um, I have the list of names that we're doing Salvation Army this year. In case some of you don't know, the CAST program has been dissolved. So we are not using that to do our generous giving this year. So we have 50 names from Salvation Army. Very similar process. You take the tag, you buy a gift, um, and then you bring it back. Now these do not have to be wrapped this time. And I would prefer the gifts be returned here to the church so that we can keep track and make sure they're all turned in and then we will see that they get to the Salvation Army. So I have the sign up list and the tags available starting today. Thank you. If you will look at the back of your bulletin at the very last page, you will notice some of the announcements. Um, this afternoon is a Rochester Ministerium Community Thanksgiving service at the uh, Rochester uh, Salvation Army at 4 o'clock. The choir will be singing there, um, so please come and join us. Also, there is a community Christmas carol sing and light up night that will start at 2.30 at the Rochester High School. Um, the Beaver Valley Choral Society started this out as like a little community Christmas carol singing and it has grown. Um, the uh, Rochester High School and the uh, Rochester Borough has now joined in and is now going to this, be this huge thing. So if you look at all the different things that are going to be going on there, so come and join and then you can come back to the church for the six o'clock um, dinner, covered dish dinner, and the hanging of the greens at seven o'clock. Please stand as we give thanks. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who calls us into an everlasting hope, who guides us to springs of water of life, who enlightens us with the spirit of wisdom. One with the communion of saints in all times and places, let us confess our sin against God and one another.
O God, our merciful Redeemer, we confess the ways we live only for ourselves. We fail to see you in our neighbors' faces. We turn our ears from your voice that cry out. We pass by the hungry and the oppressed. In your great mercy, forgive our sin and strengthen us for service to all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sin. Blessed are we. Rejoice and be glad. Beloved people of God. our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Together we pray, Righteous God, our merciful Master, you own the earth and all its people, and you give us all that we have. Inspire us to serve you with justice and wisdom, and prepare us for the joy of the day of your coming. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Are there any kids to come forward for a message? I have some milk here from... July 4th, and maybe you'll want some milk. Are you thirsty for some milk? Huh? No. Well, let's get in a circle so we can all, you know, take a swig out of this jug of milk. It's a common, yes, it's a common jug. You heard of a common cup? You heard of the common cold? It's the common jug. Yeah, the milk is from July 4th, 2000, 
16. Oh, it doesn't smell too bad. I'll just pass it. We'll start here. We'll just start here. Everybody take a sip. No. It, yes. Yes. Okay. Have you ever have you ever had something that was tasted bad? Something that like should have been thrown away, but you got a hold of it. It's not fun, is it? Kind of makes your stomach kind of turn. Like some milk. Maybe not. So God is. God has given us fresh milk. God has given us talents. God has given us gifts. Huh? Oh yeah. Use them or they will expire. They will spoil. They will go bad. All right, so use the gifts that God has given you so that they're good. Yes? Amen. Amen. Will you pray with me? Dear Jesus, thank you for Thanksgiving and food that tastes good. Help us to use our talents and gifts before they expire. Amen. Toodaloo. Here, take some milk with you. The first lesson is from the first chapter of Zephaniah, verses 7, 12 through 18. Be silent before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has consecrated his guests. At that time, I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the people who rest complacently on their dregs. Those who say in their hearts, the Lord will not do good, nor will he do harm. Their wealth shall be plundered, and their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The warrior cries aloud there, that day will be a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet blast and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. I will bring such distress upon people that they shall walk like the blind. Because they have sinned against the Lord, their blood shall be poured out like dust and their flesh like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them on the day of the, door of the Lord's wrath. In the fire of his passion, the whole earth shall be consumed for a full, a terrible end he will make of all the inhabitants of the earth the word of the Lord. Please read with me Psalm 90, 1 through 8, 9 through 12. Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another before the mountains were brought forth or the land and the earth were born. From age to age, you are God. You turn us back to the dust and say, Turn back, O children of the earth, for a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it's past, 
and like a watch in the middle. You sweep them away like a dream. They fade away suddenly like the grass. In the morning it is green and flourishes, in the evening it is dry and cold. For we are consumed by your anger. We are afraid because of your wrath. Our necrosies. When you are angry, all our days are gone. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. Who regards the power of your wrath? Who rightly fears your indignation? The second lesson is from the fifth chapter of 1 Thessalonians, verses 1 through 11. Now concerning the times and seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. <clears throat> For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night when they say, this is peace and security. Then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness, for that day to surprise you like a thief, for you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep at night and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us so that we, whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Jesus speaking with the disciples. For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. 
Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I know that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow, gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers. And on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him. Give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given. They will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, for there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. I had Thanksgiving early this year. It just worked out that way. Some of our family was getting together. Went to see grandmom and one of her two brothers, both of whom are living, both of whom are uh, army veterans. Um, one of her two brothers was there. And so I asked my Uncle Dick in conversation, in talking about Amos and Zephaniah, and how the day of the Lord is a judgment upon us. I said, how are you and God? In what standing do you consider yourself with God? And he was real quick. He's in his mid-80s. Sharp as a tack. I'm doing great. Fantastic. In 2011, his wife died and his son died as well. And sometimes death can tear us apart. But Uncle Dick, he reinforced a witness and shared with me different aspects of his life, not only recently, that reinforced his love for God and that God is loving him and God is loving his family here and on the other side of death. He said when he was a kid, he'd go to school, Sunday school, and he saw a ticket, one of those little prayer cards with a likeness of Jesus, the good shepherd, on it. And he remembers as a kid thinking, one of his earliest memories, that shouldn't be there for people to be walking on it. So he picked it up, and he put it in a drawer at home. And then he went off to the Korean War, and when he got back, that picture was gone. And he laughed. He said, I guess my mom figured I didn't need it anymore. I got back from the war. But when he was on one of the hills in Korea, he remembers seeing all his buddies and all, all the troops and all the bodies just destroyed. And for some reason, for some, the 23rd Psalm just started coming to him. And he doesn't know why he was alive and why he survived the battle. But he remembers the Lord as his shepherd and the 23rd Psalm at that moment in his life. And he continued to share different things with me. So the question is, where do you stand with God? The day of judgment, the day of the Lord is upon us. How would you answer the question? All of those who are sure maybe should sit in one area, and all of those who are not sure should sit in another area so we know. What do you think? You're not moving. 
You're acting like I'm not talking. <laughs> You're pretending to ignore me. Hey, I'm used to it. I told you, I was prepping for Thanksgiving. I already got a week ahead of you. How do I stand in the presence of God? Am I all right? Am I concerned? Are there things I need to build on? Is there a list of things that God wants me to accomplish? If you look in that text from Thessalonians, you see two words for time. One is referred to as time in that first verse, and the other one is seasons. And many, many have made distingu uh, distinguishing remarks about time and seasons, or chronological time and chronos time. Uh, say time that you measure, you know, you're born, you live, you die, you're such and such many years old, so and so happened in this year, you measure time. That's one use of time. There's another that it's God's time. The day of the Lord is God's time. When will it happen? In God's time. What kind of day will it be? It's God's time. The, the quality of the time, the season, is determined and measured exclusively, solely, in relations to God. So how much time do I have left? Well, are you talking chronological time? I'm not sure. How much time do I have left in regards to God's time, in being with God? Will I find myself weeping and gnashing my teeth? If I'm outside of God's time, yes. Yes, I will. There's all kinds of ways that are so important to us to measure the time. When we begin, when we end, when you get there, when you leave. And a lot of times, we miss God time. God time is important. That quality time with God. And Grace Church does tremendous good work. Members of Grace and friends of Grace, brothers and sisters near and far, do good work in utilizing chronological time for giving thanks to God with an eye on God time. The motivation for filling lists and for getting things done and, and helping out is God time. I see it over and over again that brothers and sisters are moved to give thanks to God and help one another because of God time. Standing in the presence of God saying, you are my God, you are my Lord, and I thank you. And as the gifts you give me, I share with others. I know I can't take them with me, and I know they will spoil or expire. So thank you, God, and I share these gifts with someone else. And this happens over and over and over again. And the future of grace depends on this witness. A witness to God time. There will be a time when we will fall. We're at war, and warriors fall. And just because it's a neighbor who's being taken away in the ambulance, or a friend who's overdosed, and it didn't immediately affect you in your time, Looking at it from God's time, your sister, your kid, is my sister, 
and my kid. And that this war is going on and taking out our loved ones. We're making all kind of horrible and risky decisions because we're not aware of God's time and true love for us. And we see the gifts that God has given spoil so readily. We're at war. We can't just ignore it and keep singing the same hymns because it brings us comfort. I mean, I don't think we could have a consensus unless we sang a hymn from the 1500s. We would fight over every other hymn and maybe over that one too. But there's a way in which, out of fear, I believe, that this congregation buries their treasures, buries their gifts, lets them spoil. Because, well, maybe that neighbor deserved it, or maybe that kid wasn't you know, in my family, or we have all kind of rationales. And we skip over to chronological time. But in standing in the presence of God's time, all the children are God's children. All the talents are God's to give and to receive and to give thanks for. And we're at war. And many are being taken. And I'm convinced that Grace Church is positioned in such a a very important place, a God place, kind of like God time. And with these talents that are not spoiled, we will continue to reach and give witness, a simple witness, genuine witness, to brothers and sisters that are hurting and doubting and broken, relationships, Families, all kinds of battles are going on. And we are positioned in such a, a special and sacred place with the talents that we have for those to multiply. The last line in the Thessalonian text is about encouraging and building up. To encourage one another, to build up one another with our witness in giving thanks to Jesus Christ. Can you imagine? You're at the table, Thanksgiving. Can you imagine that witness not being there? That person's gone. This person's gone. That person's gone. I mean, we will fall. Each and every one of us will die. Now, before we go, before it's time, how about this be the time in which we grow a witness, a partnership with someone else, so that when we fall down, They'll pick the witness back up. And I see this happening over and over and over again. Where people who are standing in the presence of God and feel secure and trust the Lord. And they know that they won't be standing forever so that you have built up or encouraged someone else to share your witness or share your spotlight. And in that way, grace will continue, encouraging and building up, giving thanks for the gifts that have not spoiled. In Jesus' name, amen.